and we actually stick to the topic, um, you know, we'll see how broad the definition of a sensory communicative acts is uh, with our next speaker, who's Francesco Fiorini. Um, I hope uh, you can still hear me and see me and we can see you. And uh, um, so I'll ask you to unmute um, and share your perfect. So um, you're speaking from Paris. Um, as you said before, the title of your speech is uh, for everyone to see and its relevance and cartographic communication and the floor is yours. You've got 20 minutes and then we've got question and answer session again. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Can you see the, my, my presentation? Yes, we can. Awesome. Okay, so yes, my thank you for having me. So this, uh, this uh, yeah, my topic is very much in line with, uh, with uh, what uh, has just been discussed here. And um, let me just, yeah. Okay, so um, my um, focus first uh, is maps, okay, C cartographic representation. So we have many different kinds of uh, maps. We have more familiar navigational maps, uh, paper maps that now are going a bit uh, out of style. And uh, we have uh, even more out of style uh, uh, maps like uh, historical Mapamundi. Uh, uh, we have maps of uh, unusual places that show views like uh, elevation, uh, like uh, this map. We have 3D maps, so maps in different formats. And uh, we have uh, also uh, one-dimensional maps. Uh, my focus is uh, about uh, maps as sharing a common feature, which is uh, the fact that they basically represent space using space plus some uh, conventions. Uh, what does it mean for a map to represent uh, space through space? Basically, it means that spatial features that are present in the representation are used or should be taken as to correspond to spatial features of the targeted territory. So in this case, you have a one-dimensional map, uh, in this case, a map uh, of uh, uh, Paris, hypothetical map of Paris, uh, that, uh, in which basically the order of these uh, symbols should be taken as to should be taken as to represent the order of the represented subject, which is the stations of a, a subway system. So it's a widespread um, uh, claim in uh, cognitive psychology that uh, uh, humans, uh, uh, in order to interpret maps, they need to be able to perform some cognitive computations or operations. And among these computations, we find the mental shrinking, so the ability to shrink. Uh, <coughs> visual uh, vi visualized space uh, mental rotation perspective switching um, and i in, in this talk i want to suggest that uh, mastering ostensive communication is a crucial uh, another, another crucial uh, operation mental operation that we that, uh, that that is needed for map interpretation in other words i want to claim that maps are communicative devices which are interpreted in a similar way as utterances in context so when we ask these questions, uh, we need uh, uh, to develop a model uh, for map communication. And if you look at geography and what, what has been done in uh, uh, geographic, ge geographic yes, uh, theoretical studies, uh, more or less we find uh, versions of uh, essentially code models um, that are less, more or less inspired by information theory. And for a review, you can read uh, McEachern in 1994. Uh, what does it mean? What, what do I mean by code model? Well, essentially, communication is conceived as a transmission of a code through a channel from a sender to a receiver in a way that is very much explicit. So uh, the, if, the effort in this research was basically to make cartography better by improving the transmission of the code itself, because that was the model that was being used. And inference and pragmatics were largely left uh, aside. Uh, in philosophy, we see uh, a, a similar problems. Uh, maps are sometimes uh, thought to have a very similar, very limited pragmatics or inferential work in, the, in map interpretation. And uh, Kazati and Varzi, for instance, uh, there, is the, there is this passage in a, in a book about uh, also about maps uh, in which they said that, uh, uh, this, that, uh, that basically the pragmatic of maps, the pragmatics of maps is, um, uh, um, is uh, fairly determined uh, if compared to the semantics of utterances in ordinary language. They say that probably the correct term for comparison 
uh, is a fairly determinate fragment of ordinary language, say a manufacturer's technical description of a dishwasher, very limited uses are possible, contextual effects are minimized, ambiguities are avoided, clarity of expression is amassed. Well, this I idea basically is that uh, uh, is uh, is similar to what is being uh, is being claimed in uh, geography and uh, it's true that occasionally philosophers have been studying some pragmatic effects but these studies are very limited and the general focus uh, was rather on the semantics with a literalist uh, approach meaning that um, again map codes encode encode almost fully uh, here I'm using literally as, as almost as synonymous as uh, um, code model. Basically, yes, the map codes encode fully uh, full represent uh, propositions with a minimal role for inference, uh, which basically is devoted to recover implicated uh, non-true conditional meaning. So. In this talk, I argue that uh, we should go for a contextualist. Uh, map pragmatics, and specifically I want to argue for a relevance theoretic cartographic uh, model of, uh, a relevance theoretic model of cartographic communication. So to prove this, I want to basically claim that uh, there is an intrusion, so to say, of the pragmatic system at the truth conditional explicit level of map meaning. Basically that the, the pragmatics uh, in a way intrudes in uh, in the interpretation of the explicit uh, truth conditional meaning of maps. This is a, a piece of evidence that was brought forward uh, for, uh, for language uh, uh, in the context of uh, the studies of, uh, in, in relevance theory. And basically I want to claim the same thing for maps uh, because uh, this will show that alternative literalist models of map pragmatics cannot uh, handle uh, mm, uh, map communication these examples of map, uh, of map communications. And also I want to briefly state that uh, this builds on previous uh, relevance theoretic approaches to pictures like uh, Pignocchi or Forceville, uh, who haven't uh, precisely looked at maps. So, but, but, but yes, pictures are very similar, so the same. So yeah, very briefly to have a very sketchy uh, semantics uh, of uh, maps, um, well, maps, as I said before, use two main features to build meaning. They use uh, a space to attribute spatial properties, and they also use symbols, that is, arbitrary uh, mar graphic marks to attribute non-spatial properties. So to see what I mean, take, for instance, this uh, map of uh, Paris, of the green areas of Paris, right? So in this map, you can see, uh, as in the previous example of the one-line map, uh, spatial properties of the regions of space on the map represent spatial properties of regions of space in the territory. For instance, this is a two-dimensional map, so distances on this map uh, should represent distances in, in, the, in the represented area, which is Paris. Uh, and it also uses symbols. So it, uh, some, some map, colored, uh, map regions are colored uh, with different colors, and these colors express uh, um, mean, uh, refer, uh, well, represent, yes, uh, attribute properties, sorry, to corresponding world religions. So green, for instance, attributes the property, uh, well, that there is a green area there. Okay, so uh, the formal semantics, the one popular uh, and, and prominent uh, account of formal semantics for maps was put forward by Kazadi and Barzi. Um, uh, yes, so basically they I won't go into details, uh, the details of this, but basically they say that uh, they use colored, uh, color and regions of maps as being basically the, the basic syntactic uh, um, elements of, uh, of maps. They, they say that basically they are enough for a map to be, to be truth, to be, to be semantically valued. So a colored map region, they say it's like a sentence. It says of a certain individual that it has a certain property. Colored map regions can be read as conjunctions of other colored map, map regions. And this is the crucial point that uh, we need to retain. They basically say that the logical structure of maps is just basic uh, conjunction. Conjunction of uh, some uh, basic uh, uh, sem sem semantic units, which are 
these uh, what, what they call map regions or map stages. Uh, so a, a paraphrase of this map would be the, this map region has the property blue and this map region has the property red and this map region has the property orange. Uh, so by doing so, they can, uh, they can provide an account of the compositionality of map. They basically can break down maps into, uh, into um, compositional elements. Uh, they, that they call a well-formed or atomic map stages. They say that a well-formed map stage is a colored map region in which only one color is maximally present. And this would be, for instance, the map stage of the property that, as that is assigned by the, by, the, by the color blue. So uh, S1, which is the map stage, is true if the word region to which the color blue assigns a property has that property. This is the semantic. This is the map stage uh, 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 red. This is the map stage orange. This, for instance, is not a well-formed map stage because it contains two colors, and uh, this also is not allowed because uh, uh, it, only, it only shows a partial, a partial distribution of uh, the red color. It doesn't show a maximal distribution of it. Uh, so, okay, this is uh, the formal, uh, so to say, it's a very rough formal representation of what a map uh, should be. The map is true if and only if all atomic map stages are true. Uh, so it's S1, S2, and S3 are true. Okay, so uh, to build a relevance-based map pragmatics, uh, uh, we want to claim basically that maps are ostensive stimuli that communicate by conveying a presumption of their own optimal relevance. Uh, I won't uh, repeat this because we are familiar with this. Uh, so basically, I want to take uh, um, uh, um, uh, in, uh, a linguistic example. So uh, John, uh, the, the, from Carston, John, uh, the context says, John has audition, just auditioned for a job in the orchestra. The director of the orchestra is, is talking to John. Uh, and, and, and basically the director says, he plays well. This produces an explicature. John Murray plays uh, the violin well. Uh, uh, and then this explicature interacts with the assumption that someone who plays the violin well has a good chance of getting a place in the orchestra. This in turn generates the conclusion that John Murray has a good chance of getting a place in the orchestra. So the idea is that uh, uh, basically, there are there is there are pragmatics uh, uh, inferences that uh, intrude uh, the very uh, um, the, the, the the very explicit and semantic uh, uh, meaning that uh, is highlighted in this uh, uh, explicature. So we have to perform a reference assignment. Uh, we have to select John Murray as the assignment. We have to disambiguate what, for instance, the verb plays means. We have to also enrich. Uh, uh, with a conceptual component, uh, by adding a conceptual component, the, the, the sentence. So we have to add, place the violin. Uh, and we have to narrow what the concept well means, that in this case might mean a very, it, it might be a, a specific uh, uh, version of what uh, playing well the violin means, because, it, because it's, uh, we, we need, we, because it means some, a very specific thing to, 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 in this context, to, to play well, that is playing well enough so to be, get into, to get a job in, the, in an orchestra. And so uh, I want to claim that basically maps display these features. So on the right, we have um, mm, uh, this kind of intrusion. So on the right, we have uh, uh, a map, a very uh, mm, sketchy map of uh, uh, a coastal area. Uh, so the logical, so the context of this map say is that uh, John is at the beach, the lifeguard comes and distribute this map to everyone, including John. Uh, and so this map represents, as the legend says, that the, the deep blue color represents the rough sea, the, the light blue color represents calm sea and the, and the light yellow sand. The logical encoded form of this map would be that, uh, well, just S1 and S2 and S3. But Fantastic. then- the... You've got five minutes, just to let yeah. you know, yeah? Thank yeah. you, thank you. Yes, I'll, I'll, speed up, I'll speed up a bit, yeah. So this is the, the explicature of this map uh, would be that this is the space, roughly, uh, this is the spatial distribution of sand and calm sea and rough sea 
uh, of the surrounding area of the beach where John is at. So we perform a reference assignment, which are the uh, which area is this map referring to? And this reference assignment is performed uh, using contextual uh, cues. Uh, but uh, we can also appeal to pre-existing conventions. Uh, 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 maps can also be produced on the spot. So for instance, if I, if I place some items on a table and I claim and I say to you that that's a map, I am using a very unconventional way of, uh, of representing space. And then I will need to verbalize uh, what um, what uh, what uh, what this uh, what this um, what this map represents in a way. Uh, so I, I, another way to to infer a reference would be familiarity with the spatial distribution. If you are familiar with the shape of Italy, you will infer that that's a map of Italy. Okay, so the, we have also this ambiguation. Uh, taken in themselves, map symbols are extremely ambiguous because they are arbitrary and sometimes do not appeal to pre-existing conventions. Ambiguities tend to arise more in situations uh, in which map conventions exist and therefore a legend is absent. For instance, uh, uh, blue uh, can conventionally mean C, but it can also conventionally mean uh, right-wing parties on political maps. Okay, so uh, to give you a model of uh, 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 to, to get to get to, to to give you a model of how maps generate implicature, implicature. So this map uh, say that say that say that consider another context. So in this context, uh, uh, the map is available, say, for sailors to navigate the targeted coast. Uh, again, uh, we have the explicature that says that this is the spatial distribution of uh, uh, sand and calm sea and rough sea in the area surrounding this coastal area. Uh, the assumption that uh, the sailor is gonna is gonna access is that plausibly, uh, if the sea is rough, meaning a specific thing, uh, a specific concept uh, at a certain location, then one shouldn't go sail there, and then the map generate the implicature the sailor. So I, for instance, I'm a sailor, shouldn't go sail there. So this is a case of enrichment. Uh, uh, we are narrowing basically the concept of rough sea. Uh, this concept of rough sea, rough sea for sailor is, is not the same thing as rough sea for uh, swimmers. And this is an, another example of enrichment, uh, which is addi addition. So, uh, but maybe since I have uh, not that much time left, I think that, I'll, yes, I'll, I'll maybe About go. Two minutes. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go for it. So basically, uh, and this is another context in which uh, Anne and Bob are texting. Uh, and say, and text, shall we play tennis today? And Bob sends the map on the right. Uh, the map has the logical form S1 and S2, which stands for the gray symbol with the, with the lightning. The assumption is that uh, is, if it is raining at a particular location at a given time, one cannot play tennis at the location at that time. So the explicature will be enriched so as to include uh, time, time, the time, the, con the temporal concept. So it would be something like today it's raining at Anne and Bob's location, and this would generate the implicature uh, Anne and Bob can play tennis today. And so time, time is a very, time is a very, as, as so, time is a very uh, compelling case, I think, for maps because, uh, well, maps tend to be. Uh, uh, tend to be in a way silent about uh, about uh, about uh, the, the different uh, times that can be assigned to different parts of the map so yeah so this is another example of temporary enrichment uh, which might, we might go back to in the in the yes in the q a this is another example of time so yeah so i think that i'll just conclude now these are other pragmatic issues and so basically, just by showing that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that map communication features this kind of intrusion through uh, inferred uh, pragmatic enrichments in the evaluation, we can claim that, uh, yes, that maps convey presumption of relevance, essentially behaving like utterances in context. Uh, yeah, and then the third point I haven't talked about. Further issues might be, 
uh, that map pragmatics, uh, of course, has yet to develop. This is a very initial uh, stage, uh, so to say. And this approach needs to be refined. Possible directions include uh, experimental testing, uh, as well as a more in-depth dialogue with other contemporary existing uh, pragmatic approaches in linguistics uh, that, uh, that uh, might uh, offer different solutions for these phenomena. Thank you. Thank you, for... Francesco. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the lovely speech. Um, uh, stimulating thought on uh, the uh, on map meaning, interpretation of, of maps. And um, now um, we've got lots of a round of applause for you. I was wondering whether there's any comments or uh, questions that you might want to put to Francesco. Um, I'll see. Oh, Francesca's just raised her hand. So, Francesca, uh, you can speak. Thank you. Uh, that was uh, very nice. I definitely have to think more and uh, possibly talk to you more about, uh, about this presentation. It just struck me that um, most of the um, implicature that you presented from these uh, that were arising from these maps are. Uh, uh, are uh, of a normative tone, and uh, I wonder how because uh, all of it maybe not all because uh, you skipped some of the slides, so I I don't know if it's a if it's a valid point <laughs> uh, actually. But the one that you presented were uh, implicature of the type of you should not do that or uh, you you should do that and so on. And I just wonder whether this is a specific uh, like whether this is just a, a, a random thing or whether there is something with maps and possibly with other type of visualization that is uh, interpreted as intrinsically normative uh, or prescriptive, maybe not normative, sorry, prescriptive. Th thank you for the question. It's, it's really, it's true, it's true. Uh, most, uh, mo I think that uh, this is a consequence of because I, I try to use examples that are close to uh, what co what our contemporary use uh, use of maps is, but uh, but uh, but uh, it it's not necessarily the case. I think so. If maps can tell stories, for instance, and uh, this map that you can see, for instance, is a medieval map uh, that locates the Garden of Eden, as long with other 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 places and this map uh, this map um i'm i'm not sure it's telling you uh, yes uh, uh, to 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 conform to a certain norm to adopt a certain norm it's not giving you a certain instruction it's telling a story saying that uh, here uh, this uh, this happened mainly the garden of eden here this other thing happened here this other thing happened and uh, it also obeys to uh, uh presumption of relevances but uh, is not uh, it, it is not I don't think that it would generate uh, uh, instructions but uh, I think that it's a it's not it's a bit random in the sense that I selected only examples that include that but it's also a consequence again of the fact that maps give instructions and in in, in our real uh, they are used to most of most of the times they used to guide our behavior in very in very specific and constrained contexts for instance in navigation or i don't know journey planning but uh, you can find examples i think even in contemporary users of maps like uh, statistical maps that don't tell you you should do that uh, but uh, but uh, that tell you well to to contemplate a certain uh, hypothetical scenario, for, for, for instance. But it's a very uh, nice comment, and I, I'll pay more attention to this so as to include as di diverse examples, of, as many diverse examples as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, if no one else got questions, I've got two. I've got one small remark and another question. Um, one small remark regards uh, graphicity, which was mentioned by Francesca before, I think, and it's, it's a point that I raised uh, for Tom as well this morning. I think um, just to, I think it needs to be, competencies uh, need to be mentioned. In in this case, obviously, in, in interpreting um, maps or graphs, but spatial intelligence, you know, competencies need to be taken into account when you want to try and account for this type of map meaning. The second is more of a question. You talked about guiding the interpretation 
And that obviously, in my mind, always triggers procedural meaning. Have you ever thought about um, giving some of the elements that you find in maps or in graphs before um, a procedurally encoded um, meaning explanation? Um, yeah, for, for the first, uh, thank you for, the, for, this, uh, for these two questions. Uh, about uh, the issue of graphicacy or, uh, uh, well, I don't know if there is another term for maps, but yes, a special understanding. I think uh, that uh, this account, I agree, this account should be refined and, uh, and, uh, and yes, and that, and that uh, it's, an, it's an issue that I'm currently working on. Uh, well, well, how, what are the kind of spatial uh, understanding abilities that are needed uh, to, to interpret maps? Uh, a few researchers- Minus are... zero, for instance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's another question. Why do people are better? Why, why, are, pe why are some people better? Uh, some people are worse. Uh, this is an open uh, question. And I think that anyone has provided a full answer to that. And it uh, certainly pertains to map meaning because map meaning uses, uh, is essentially space again. So if you, if, you know, if you know how to do things with space cognitively, you'll know how to use a map. That's the, uh, that's the idea. But uh, maybe some other features are needed, like, I don't know, imagination, uh, uh, right? Uh, imagining myself as being a bird flying on the map to, to interpret the map. So imagine myself viewing the map from a distance. I don't know if this other, yeah, there are a number of cognitive. Uh, and uh, the, 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 other, the other question, I don't, I don't know, I haven't thought about it yet, uh, procedural meaning. So that's, uh, that's it, but I'm gonna look into that. Uh, it's, uh, so the, this was just, a, yeah, this, this is just a, what I could come up with, but, um, but, uh, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that I will look into that. And I couldn't, uh, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure that we, we, could, uh, we could offer a model of map communication along the lines of uh, procedural meaning as well. Uh, it's just uh, that uh, no one has done so, but uh, uh, I thank you for this remark. I will, I will thank look. you. Just food for thought for you and Francesca as well, if uh, uh, yes. you, know, you find that interesting. But um, thank you.